Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received Kuwait's Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Ahmed Nasser Al Mohammed Al Sabah and Finance Minister, State Minister for Economic Affairs and Investment Abdul Wahab Mohammed Al Rashid at Sakhir Palace. The minister conveyed to His Majesty the King the greetings of the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and the Deputy Emir and Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and their wishes of further progress and prosperity for Bahrain and its people. His Majesty welcomed the ministers and requested them to convey his greetings to the Emir of Kuwait and Deputy Emir and Crown Prince and his wishes of further progress and prosperity to Kuwait and its people under the leadership of the Kuwaiti Emir. His Majesty affirmed the historic brotherly relations between the two countries that continue to develop thanks to the mutual keenness to benefit both countries and peoples. His Majesty praised the pioneering role of the Emir of Kuwait in enhancing the bilateral relations and hailed Kuwait's firm stances towards Bahrain and its efforts to serve the joint GCC Arab and Islamic action. The Kuwaiti Foreign Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and hailed his keenness to further develop the bilateral relations and cooperation. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, the Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, the Minister of Health, Jalila Hassan, the Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, the Minister of Information Affairs, Dr. Ramzan Al Naimi, and a number of officials. His Highness affirmed the importance of cooperation and coordination between all relevant authorities and the Executive Committee organizing the 2020 24 school games, which is hosted by Bahrain in October 2024, with the participation of 57 countries in 25 different sports. He said that the unlimited support of His Majesty the King to sports and athletes in the kingdom and the continuous directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to support the sports sector and cooperate with its establishments is a motivation to maximize the return of sports at various levels. He noted that the development of Bahrain's record in hosting regional and international sporting events will contribute in revitalizing sports tourism and achieve further development in the sports infrastructure. His Highness affirmed Bahrain's ability to host this global sporting event thanks to the support of its leadership and the efforts of all relevant authorities. The Special Representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, received Kuwait's Foreign Affairs Minister, Dr. Ahmed Nasser Al Mohammed Al Sabah, and Finance Minister, State Minister for Economic Affairs and Investment, Abdul Wahab Mohammed Al Rashid. Present were the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Ambassador of Kuwait to Bahrain, Sheikh Thamar Jabr Al Ahmed Al Sabah. His Highness praised the special and remarkable bonds between Bahrain and Kuwait and stressed the the importance of continuous consultation and coordination on various issues in a way that contributes to reinforcing the interests of the two countries and their peoples. The Kuwaiti ministers stressed that their visit to Bahrain confirms the special relations between the two countries and peoples. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fozi Yazainal, addressed the first session of the 14th Summit of Women Speakers of Parliament hosted by Uzbekistan and said that Bahrain achieved a remarkable success in confronting the repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic and implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She stressed that the Kingdom has taken proactive steps since the outbreak of the pandemic to protect the health and safety of citizens and residents based on a solid base of close cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities within a framework that enhanced human rights and public freedoms. She noted that the Kingdom of Bahrain has endeavor to achieve effective integration and coordination between public and private sector institutions and stress that Bahrain is keen on taking effective steps in line with the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. 
The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, met with a delegation from Majid al fatayim's real estate group, led by country head Khalid Al-Ajmi. Al Sayrafi affirmed the ministry's commitment to providing all related support and services to different investors in the tourism sector. She stressed the government's support for private sector tourism establishments in line with its launched tourism sector strategy and to further diversify tourism-related projects and ventures. The minister highlighted Majid al fatayim group's successful projects in the Kingdom of Bahrain, especially in the field of hospitality, retail and entertainment. She affirmed the ministry's readiness to continue providing the support it needs to increase its potential for expansion and growth. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, participated in the meeting of the 153rd session of the Ministerial Council of the GCC, which was held at the headquarters of the GCC General Secretariat in Riyadh. The meeting was chaired by the Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the current session of the Ministerial Council, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, and with the participation of GCC Foreign Ministers and GCC Secretary General Dr. Naif Al Hajraf. The Council discussed the topics on the agenda, including the implemented decisions of the Supreme Council and the Ministerial Council regarding promoting the Joint Gulf Action, the recommendations of the relevant ministerial committees, and the reports of the General Secretariat. The foreign ministers also discussed avenues of cooperation between the GCC and world countries and blocks through strategic dialogue and the progress of free trade negotiations between the GCC and a number of friendly countries. They also discussed the latest regional and international developments and the challenges facing the region of the countries. The Information and E-Government Authority organized an awareness workshop for the public on how to use government e-services and channels with the aim to raise awareness and enhance the digital culture in the kingdom. More on this report. The Communication and Marketing Department at the Information and E-Government Authority organized an open workshop for the public on how to use government e-services and channels, which witnessed a number of visitors and civil society institutions members. This workshop is a part of a series of awareness workshops that aim to serve the public electronically through the Bahrain.bh portal. Our main objective in the Information and E-Government Authority is to transform um, society into a more digital tech-savvy community uh, by arranging such awareness sessions where we are helping um, society and educating the public to uh, easily use the e-services available and electronic channels um, that have been distributed now in the market. Uh, with the increase of digital uh, transformation of e government e-services, we found that such awareness sessions support uh, the community by um, um, educating them how to enter the search engine uh, on Bahrain.bh, how to look for the service that they require, how to conduct um, the transaction that they're looking for. The goals of the workshop are in line with the Kingdom's digital transformation goals and it targets people of different age groups in order to encourage them to conduct their transactions and services electronically. Usually most of the practices around the world is uh, governments and uh, government entities are introducing the most advanced technologies as the case in the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, where the uh, IGA and the related ministries are always uh, looking for the most advanced uh, technologies, services in order to uh, implement the uh, services in an uh, uh, easy and simplified way for the end users. However, in most of the cases, users always have a kind of a challenge to um, uh, adapt or understand the new advanced services. Or maybe there is a previous expectation that was uh, there. Uh, I believe such workshops and trainings that uh, IGA is doing is going to add a real new dimension and information to the general public where they will act by their role to share that knowledge also with their relevant relatives and families. The workshop aims to cope with the development of electronic transactions, digital transformation and digital economy and attract the audience to these services. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Mohammed Youssef. 
The communication between educational cadres in the Ministry of Education and Parents affirms the importance of enhancing an advanced educational system that raises scientific and educational efficiency and the levels of students at all educational levels. Parents play a key role in the learning process through the cooperation and communication with the educational cadres in order to ensure their participation in the educational process. In turn, the school administration plays an active role through the educational staff's adoption of optimal methods to attract parents to schools and to consolidate the relationship between the two parties, which makes the parents and the school in a continuous communication cycle. This communication improved the performance of the students and increased their academic achievements by involving them in the educational process in an appropriate educational manner. The Ministry of Interior, with its various departments, was keen on providing all necessary preparations to ensure the safe and secure return of students to schools. The Ministry pays considerable attention to ensuring the safety of students, the solidarity of traffic police, community police and school security guards to provide a safe environment for students, starting from entering the school gate to providing them with awareness programs and instructions that contribute to student evaluation and raising safety standards. The Ministry embodied the best form of community partnership through the presence of police personnel in the vic vicinity of schools with the relevant authorities according to plans that work to raise awareness among drivers, parents and students with the need for all to cooperate by adhering to traffic regulations and instructions and avoiding incorrect behavior to ensure a safe school year. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Arab Observatory for Human Rights, Adel Asumi, delivered a speech at the opening of the 8th Conference of Officials in Charge of Human Rights at Arab Interior Ministries in Cairo. He affirmed that Bahrain achieved a distinct qualitative leap in human rights at the regional and international levels. Al Asumi said that His Majesty the King issued the Alternative Punishment Law five years ago, noting that Bahrain today is about to implement a new national and civilized project, which is the Open Prisons Program that emphasizes that human rights is a practice stemming from the national framework. He praised the efforts made by the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and reflecting the sincere royal interest in human rights. The Saudi Finance Minister Mohammed Abdullah Al Jadan delivered a speech during the opening of the Euro Money Saudi Arabia 2022 conference, in which he affirmed that the Saudi economy has become stronger than ever, despite the challenges the world has faced over the past few years. He said that according to the International Monetary Fund for 2022, the GDP growth in the kingdom is expected to reach 7.6%. He pointed out to the launch of the Financial Sector Development Program, the Financial Technology Strategy, which seeks to increase the number of financial technologies technology companies operating in the kingdom to 230 companies and to increase the share of non-cash transactions to 70% by 2025. Discussions were held regarding aspects of the existing cooperation between Amman and Saudi Arabia in various fields of transport and logistics to achieve the vision of the leaderships of the two countries and the aspirations of the two brotherly peoples. The Amani side was chaired by the Minister of Transport, Communications and Information Technology, Engineer Saeed Al Maouli, and from the Saudi side, the Minister of Transport and Logistics, Engineer Saleh Al Jasser. The two sides stress the importance of strengthening strategic cooperation and accelerating the implementation of joint projects and initiatives in light of the distinguished relations that bring the two countries together at various levels.